Well, I made up my mind at the age of five that I was going to be a musician and got my first guitar f for that birthday and uh, made, I decided to, uh, well, I, I was a self-taught blues guitarist originally, or folk guitarist, then blues guitarist, then jazz guitarist. And then uh, my grandfather took me to a classical guitar concert, uh, which was Andre Segovia in Sydney at the time. And it was an all Bach concert and I fell in love with classical music, I fell in love with Bach. And um, knew from that moment that I had to study classical music. So, And one old English gentleman, who I, I'd learnt this Bach prelude from by ear from a record because I couldn't read music at the time and, uh, and this bloke said, and I was playing at some friend's party and the blo a bloke said one of those he said, I remember his name he was Captain James Sigley XRN and he said where did you learn to play like that young man and I, I said oh, I just taught myself you know and he said right you must get yourself to London and go to the Royal College of Music not the Academy the Royal College of Music there's a young man there called John Williams teaching the guitar and that became it was John Williams and Julian Breen the two greatest guitarists in the world had set up the first uh, classical guitar department in, in basically in conservatoires in the world and that was the, the mecca for me and for thousands of other of aspiring guitarists and I got a job as a postman and saved up and came to England and miraculously got a place at the Royal College of Music. And uh, spinning fast forward, I, I um, I'm now a professor of composition there, and I've just been made a fellow of the Royal College. But yes, and my career while I was at college took off, and I got my, I studied classical guitar and composition, and I got my first professional comp. Uh, commission as a composer while I was in my second year at college to write a, a dance score for London Contemporary Dance Theatre, uh, by, commissioned by the choreographer Siobhan Davis, who's a, a very distinguished choreographer. And uh, that toured around the world and, and since then I've done 52 ballet scores and up until the time I'd met Charles, I think probably about 40 of them un under my belt. And the great thing about writing for uh, at ballet companies and dance companies is they get performed all the time. They go into repertoire and they, they are performed. You know, they're not, it's not a one-off commission that gets one um, per cell room or Elizabeth Hall performance. It's they're, they're, They go into rep and stay there for years. So that was the beginning of my... Um, you know my my commissioned work, and and it was a great experience because it's learning the art of collaboration. I had to work with other artists, with the discipline of of you know of working with a dif a different art form, and um, and with choreographers, with set designers, with uh, lighting designers. And in the theatre in general, because I'd I'd worked at the National Theatre, I played the the lute in Albert Finney's Hamlet at the National Theatre and uh, so I came from that background and um, basically uh, yeah I was, I was already writing a lot of music and I had a lot of commissions and by then I'd had my first um, commissions to write music for television um, well gosh I'd, I'd done a lot of that and uh, Yes, I'd done my first, I was asked to write the music for Inspector Morse. I did the theme and then all subsequent films, you know, there's, well, there's hours and hours of music in those, you know, 45 to 50 minutes in each film. Um, so by the time I'd met Charles, uh, playing cricket, some, I was, gosh, 25 years ago or something, uh, I'd probably written quite a few hundred hours of music and that was the background <laughs> writing music but most importantly collaborating with people from different disciplines which I love you know it's just so much less ivory tower than being stuck in your little garret and 
I, I think I'll spend six months writing a string quartet. It's not like that. It wasn't in Mozart and Haydn's day either, or Bach's, you know. They had to, Bach had to turn out a cantata every Sunday, for every Sunday. He didn't have time to be in a garret. <laughs> he had to do it. And so did, so did the others, you know. It's, they're, yeah, they're deadlines and they have to be met. And, and you know, he was, he was the uh, piper, basically. And, and that, things haven't changed, but... Yeah, I, I think it, it was the refreshing thing was to learn that you can you don't have to be in the ivory tower you, that you can work with other disciplines. And uh, meeting Charles and then uh, playing cricket is a very fine bowler, and I still got one of the cricket balls that uh, he took wickets with in the, one of the first games we played together, and uh, rather useful batsman too I seem to have called down the order and and we um, became great mates and out of the blue uh, one day Charles said um, would you be interested in, at all in writing music for an interactive game and actually I, th I believe I just instantly said I'd love to yeah. and um, it was a very simple reason that I, th I thought at the time that most music for all computer games and video games was pretty naff and unnecessarily so. Why, you know, why was it always done on you know, bad synthesizers and why was it always saying nye, nye, nye? and it was sort of patronising and patronising for kids, for little kids, you know, at, and some games, you know, are very sophisticated and, and particularly after speaking with Charles the, the levels of sophistication we were talking about with Broken Sword 1 you know, are way beyond that they're, you know, they're, they're, they're grown up games that kids can play too if they're, if they're clever enough I have no hesitation in, in uh, pointing out that in my humble opinion that if Ma Mozart and Bach and Haydn and all my other heroes were alive today, they would not only be writing film music and television music, they would certainly be doing interactive games and Mozart would be right out there in the forefront trying to do the most incredibly interesting, difficult bastards that he could find, I'm sure. Uh, I'm absolutely certain about that. Because it is about music and all art is only about communication. And the more people you can reach, that that is the aim. So you know, being snobbish about it, or you know, uh, yes, I can remember people saying, "Oh, um, oh gosh, he's he's writing music for television. It's n n not really concert material." Well, the fact is, you write the best music you can for whomever you can, and uh, as I say, there's very few people. You know, left in the band that only write concert music, classical music, uh, that wouldn't give their right thingy to be actually able to write a film score or, for, uh, for that matter, uh, music for an interactive game, full stop.